Welcome to Lessons from the Cockpit. Today, we're gonna to talk about tolerations and how they can cause all kinds of trouble in your VA business. Hi everybody, I'm Belinda Sandor. Welcome to Lessons from the Cockpit. Um, where I will be sharing both tactical and practical information about how to get your virtual assistant business off the ground and running smoothly. So these are tips for you for you if you're just thinking about this and you're just sort of sniffing around and thinking, oh, this might be for me, or if you've been in business for a while. So I'd love to hear where you're coming in from. So let I'm going to just open the comments over here. Let me know where you're coming in from. I can see you guys pouring in. Good morning, Tammy. Hello, hello, hello. Watching from YouTube. That's awesome. And uh, I, I'd love to hear where you're coming in from. And also, if there's something about this topic, tolerations, that caught your attention. So Lessons from the Cockpit is brought to you by the VA Connection. And at the VA Connection, we work with aspiring um, and established VAs to help them build a thriving business through our free community, our courses, and our coaching programs. So today we're going to talk about um, tolerations, how they can get in the way, how they can cause all kinds of trouble. And I think it's interesting because I think a lot of the tolerations we have, we think of it as, um, oh, it's okay. I, you know, I, I, I can, I'm fine. I'm fine. When really these are things that are, are small and they build up and they can cause all kinds of trouble. And we're going to dive into that. All right. So here we've got, all right, Veronica is here and Kathy Ann from Trinidad is here. Kakoya is here. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, it's La uh, Latika from Maryland. Hello from Chattanooga. Hello. I wonder if that's Heather. Um, good morning from New Jersey, all the places. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Diana uh, Marie, hello. Good morning, Maria. Hello from Canada. Yay. So we are represented right now, at least in the US, Canada, Trinidad, um, and um, South Africa. So I will take that for sure. That's really exciting. And Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. And good evening from Norway, Diana says. <laughs> I love that. I love how I am sitting you know, in the, we call it the middle bedroom of our house. And we're able to have this community of all of you together. It's so exciting. And, and it can be that way in your VA business as well. You can have clients all over the world. And Jane just joined us from the UK. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Um, oh, good. So Tammy says, um, I've worked as a virtual assistant and developed some bad habits that made it difficult at times. Looking forward to the right way to start up and avoid all that. Yes, it can be difficult to, um, to change habits sometimes, but we're going to dive into that. We are going to dive into that for sure. But before we do, I just want to introduce myself briefly to everybody because we are streaming on YouTube and we're all over Facebook. We are on Twitter. We are on um, LinkedIn. So if you're watching from YouTube, please click the subscribe button so that you can be notified every time we go live. So, um, and Svetlana is here. Hello, Svetlana from South Africa. Um, so I want, I want to talk about um, my story a little bit. This is me and Emily. I call her my little delish, much to her horror. I call her other things that I won't tell you that I think are really cute. She hates. But anyway, th this is us um, uh, back in 2010. And I was, you know, going through this, you know, crazy divorce. I'm a newly single mom. All the things that I thought about turning 50, I was almost 50 years old, were not happening. You know, instead of... Um, having a home, I was losing my home. I had to sell my home. And, um, you know, instead of being financially stable, which I always thought by 50, I would be, um, I had a ton of debt, you know, and, um, and, and all of these things that I was really counting on because, you know, of the jobs that I had and because of the education and all the things, you know, that, that, um, what do we want to call it? Uh, I, I talk about this at the challenge. I'm trying to think what it's called. Um, but but it's like that a traditional, this isn't it, but traditional wisdom tells you if you do these things, you'll be successful. And, um, and, and it, that's not what happened for me. So I have no job. I'm having to move. I struggle all over the place. I have a ton of debt. Um, something I haven't really addressed with you guys, but I also hadn't paid my taxes for a few years. And that was a huge 
deal because I had to face down a business that had been unsuccessful. I had piles of receipts, piles of, you know, just bank statements that had to be gone through for years and years and years. And then all of the tax reports had to be filed and arrangements with the IRS and, you know, all of that. So I, I was a mess. <laughs> I, I was a mess and I, I had to figure out how to get out of it. You know, I had to figure out how to get out of it. So I really bit the elephant, you know, one bite at a time. You know, I handled my, I first I figured out how to make money, which is what I teach you here at the virtual assistant at the VA connection, you know, how to get clients, how to manage your money, how to, you know, figure all of this out so that you can change that story for yourself. You can change the narrative, right? And, and, and I did it one piece at a time. I started to make money doing what I teach you guys in the Kickstarter challenge. And then I started to look at my credit cards like, okay, I've got to stop this um, interest income from swallowing me up. So I started to pay down the cards one at a time, you know, so if one payment was $50 a month and this payment was $50 a month, as soon as I paid this card off, I started paying this one a hundred. And I just kept doing that until the credit cards were gone. It took some time. It definitely took some time, but I turned it into a game. You know, instead of I'm a loser, which, you know, I definitely felt like I thought, how can I be a winner? How can I change the story in my head? And I got some help with that. You know, I definitely got some help with that. And um, so so I did. And I just started biting, you know, taking the elephant down, you know, love elephants, but, you know, one bite at a time. And then I dealt with the IRS and I became, went into a, um, you know, a, a payment plan with them, but I kept getting clients. That was the key. I kept my business running. And after I had a few clients, I professionalized it. You know, I, I got business cards and a website and, you know, and all of those things. And I talk a lot about email newsletters and that was at the core of what really worked for me was um, staying in touch with people I already knew and really establishing a consistent schedule to show people who I was and what I could do. And by doing that, um, we're, you know, I'm in a completely different space. I've been in business since 2010. I've worked with over 220 clients and I've made over a million dollars literally sitting in the chair I'm sitting in right now. And I did that by staying in touch with the people that I know, knew, professionalizing my business, getting the word out, delivering good, good work to my clients. And it's really, it's possible. The first year I was in business, I made $70,000. And every year since then, for the next 10 years, I made $100,000. Being a VA, being just, not just, but doing VA work, not training you how to be VAs, not having an agency, not having a team or any of those things, just really getting high quality clients, understanding how to price my work so that people would pay for it and I could make enough money. All of that is really important. And so now um, here we are, you know, I went from thinking uh, I wouldn't have anything to really having everything I've always wanted and the things that I still want, I'm working toward, you know, Greg and I want to own a, um, a farm and I, we want to have a few acres and I want to have 30 chickens and who knows, maybe a goat. <laughs> That's Emily's idea, but, um, but definitely a barn. And, and I can see, I can see how those things can happen. I can see how those things can happen. So here we are, we got married in 2021. And these are our kids, um, Emily and Greg's four boys, um, David, Charlie, Stephen, and Andy. And this is on our wedding day. And my life is different now. My finances are different now. I I am not running around. You know, I, I used to know the day that everything was due. You know, like the, I have to pay the cell phone bill by today or it's going to be turned off. You know, and I was just always running around like that. And it was such high stress. And um, And now by doing the things that I teach you, I have a thriving business. I have peace. You know, I have the feeling of satisfaction, the, the feeling of self-reliance, of knowing that I can take care of myself. And that's something that I never thought I would have again. And it's, it's not, I was thinking about this this morning when I was out with the chickens, none of what I'm teaching you is the steps aren't difficult. The difficulty is the consistency, right? And to, you know, get out of bed because you told yourself you were going to get in touch with two people and, um, you know, scheduling the email for the next morning because it's 10 o'clock at night and, 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 and doing it anyway. And I still have lots of things in my life like that, things I don't want to do. But, but here's something I think about sometimes is that sometimes I, like, 
I, I, I don't want to do, and I won't go into the story of what I was recently working on. Some of you already know, but, but I, 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 I made myself a promise in June and I didn't keep it. And I started to feel really bad about it. And so I did the thing that I promised myself in June that I would do this week, you know, yesterday. And, um, and, and I didn't want to do it. I knew it would get me to the next place I wanted to be in my life and in my career. Um, but I feel so proud of myself. And now that the experience is over and I can look back at it, it's like, yeah, I did that. I did that. Did I do it perfectly? I don't think so, but that's okay. Bring on the feedback. Let me fine tune it. You know, let me make it better. And that's where the excitement is. That's where it is. So let's get started. Um, yeah. So Diana says the hunger and consistency are key. Yeah. Consistency is everything guys. You know, I, I, um, I got to tell you, it's everything. And it's, and it's, it's for a couple of reasons. It's not because, so, so it's for a couple of reasons. One is that when you're consistent and this is, when I say this, I think this sounds crazy, but I think you'll get it. You're going to start to trust yourself. Cause when I wasn't paying the bills on time, when I, when I wasn't doing what I said I was going to do, I didn't trust myself to do what I said I was going to do. And that was smart because I wasn't, I wasn't doing what I, what, what I said I was going to do. And once I started doing that, my confidence started to really build because I thought, okay, I did that. I did that. And you, and it's, so it's, it's not for other people that you're writing your newsletter. It's not you know, for other people that you're keeping your word to yourself has nothing to do with anybody. You know, you could just keep your word to yourself that you're going to empty the dishwasher every morning. That would be enough, you know, um, or that you're going to walk half a mile or that you're going to eat good food. Like it doesn't matter what it is, but when you tell yourself you're going to do something, do it, like do it. And then after you do it, I probably said to Greg 700 times and even more to myself yesterday, I did the thing. I did the thing. I was scared of it. It actually made me cry, not in a bad way. And, um, and I, I, I did it. I hundred percent did it. And now I feel, um, I don't know. What's the word? It's like more filled up today. Like, okay. You know, I walked through that thing and it could be as simple as, um, as you know, taking the first step towards getting clients or setting up your office or, or, or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Heather, uh, Heather says, build in solid daily habits, start to trust yourself, keep promises to yourself, build confidence. That's right. That's right. Yes. People trust confident people mm -hmm. and consistency breeds confidence. It's true. It's, it's absolutely true. And people see you as consistent, you know, they're like, oh yeah, she keeps showing up. She's not fooling around. Oh yeah. Here she is again. She's at this networking meeting every month. She's here, you know, every month, her messaging is consistent. All the things that I teach you. Um, and it's just a matter of incorporating them a little at a time into your life. Right. That's right. Oh, so here's a comment. It's also good that when thing that when being consistent and things aren't going the way that you want, but when you figure things out, you feel great. You know, here's the, the thing about that. Um, so when I, um, when I was, I'm going to make this really short, but when I was trying to get pregnant, I did IVF. I had a very small chance of getting pregnant, 15% chance. After we tried IVF once, the doctor didn't want me to do it. I lost my mind. I mean, like lost my mind, convinced him he was going to let me do it. So I went in with this no regrets policy for myself, ate good food, stopped exercising, didn't drink any caffeine, didn't drink any alcohol. You know, all the things that everybody says you should do after the, the embryo was implanted, people are like, yeah, you can go out, you can do whatever you want. I laid on the couch for three days. I'm like, I am not moving. This is, the, you know, I know it can't fall out, but like, that's what my thing was just like, you know, sending the energy there. And um, really at the, and, and so Emily, Emily was born, she's fabulous, you know, and I got to be a mom. I went into my business with the same energy of no freaking regrets. I didn't want a job. It wasn't like, oh yeah, if this works out or it'll take time. It was like, how am I going to make this work? And that's how I went into this with the same thing. And for those of you in VA, VA school and the VIP club, you have this like this, it's called a sprinkling tracker where you can track everything. And that's where that came from. When I got in bed at night and things were not going well, or I couldn't tell that anything was moving, I would look at that tracker. Okay. I did this. 
I did this, I did this, I'd go to bed, I'd wake up again, and I wouldn't analyze why it didn't, well, I would look at it if I thought I could improve it. But I didn't go into Debbie Downer mode. I was like, okay, do it again, do it again, do it again. And that's how my business took off. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. This is good, uh, Donna. I feel like I'm adulting when um, I keep my word to myself, right? And that feels good. That feels really good. Like, okay, I got this. Because when I was turning 50, I didn't got anything. You know, I was just a mess. I was a mess. All right. Thank you for all those thoughts. This is amazing. Okay, so let's let's talk about tolerations, okay? So tolerations are those little annoying things, right? Little annoying things that you're putting up with. You know, um, like, are you always struggling to find your client's phone numbers? You know, do you keep the uh, supplies, you know, that you need in your basement instead of near your desk? Is there like a Zoom link that you need to use all the time and you just have to open Zoom every time? Like it's not somewhere where you can just recently, you know, recently find it, easily find it. You know, is there a, a pile of papers in your office that you've ignored for years or months or days even, you know? So now is to really take the time and, and really build a muscle, right? Build a muscle because I'm all about putting a new process in place and then figuring out how to support that process so that it continues. So you don't get into this big giant mess again, right? It's all because, because then you can't leverage, you, you can't leverage. So I want to get, show you the, um, the Webster's dictionary um, uh, definition of toler toleration because it's in, it's kind of funny because you're like, oh, I can tolerate that. You know, like no big deal. I'm fine. Like if this is in the category of I'm fine. Right. So the capacity to endure pain or hardship. OK, why would we do that? OK, why would we do that from the Latin toler to put up with or suffer? OK, so hardship, pain, suffering. OK, I want you to believe this. I want you to believe this. So let's dive into what some of the tolerations are, and then we're going to make a plan. Okay, good. Consistent computer annoyances. Okay, consistent computer annoyances. Not enough memory. Um, th you know, the little wheel is going around. Um, you have one monitor and you're driving yourself crazy. You're trying to work on a laptop and you can't see anything. I mean, that, that's a toleration. That was a toleration for me for a long time. I get very frustrated and in a, like very grumpy when I am working on my laptop because I can't see anything. You know, it's like, ah, I, I need I need this like digital space in front of me. But I'm talking about also things like, you know, broken equipment. You know, if if you're my printer right now, I am tolerating it. I don't know why, but when I tried to print in color, it does this really funky thing. So what I've been doing when we have um, VA school, you know, we put all the, you know, the new students behind me, I've been putting them in a Word document, saving them, emailing them to Greg, going down to his computer, <laughs> opening my email and his email, you know, and then printing them, which is ridiculous, ridiculous. So that is something that I'm going to figure out um, before the next VA school. There's probably just some button I need to press to um, reset the colors. I don't know. Um, but it, but it's, it's that kind of thing where, you know, we just, we live with it and we live with it and we live with it. And so in our action plan, we'll talk about how to handle that. But this is a common toleration. Here's one. And this, <laughs> this is like fine until it's not. Are your files backed up? Like seriously, are they backed up in a reliable way? And as someone who learned this lesson, not once, but twice, spending $1,700 each time to get my hard drive um, uh, restored, uh, you don't want to do this, you know, and and it, it's not difficult to know if your files are being backed up. Now, I want to include in this your website. I had my website host, uh, hosted with uh, DreamHost a number of years ago, and the server broke. And they were like, whoops, we didn't have a backup. Now, I know they say on their website it's backed up, but if they don't have a backup, they don't have a backup. It's not like they can manufacture that, right? So fortunately... Barry, my web guy, ha he had a backup that was, you know, a few months old, so we could restore the blog. And, you know, and so for two or three hundred dollars, I got my website back up instead of spending the thousands of dollars I initially paid to have it built for me. Right. So you want to make sure that that you're not caught in a vulnerable position when it comes to your digital files. You don't have to go crazy, but but it's but it's important. So one of um, 
my students, she has, um, Tori, she has um, thumb drives, you know, for different clients and she puts them in a, a fireproof box. I have a fireproof box too. It's, um, it's actually sitting right next to me. It's like a big suitcase and I put all the important papers in there. I just did this recently. Talk about feeling like a, I was adulting. It was huge. You know, like the, um, the titles to the cars, life insurance policies, you know, that's passports. That was stuff was all over the house. So I went through, um, the whole house and pulled it all together. And Kokoya is mentioning an external hard drive. That's what I would recommend. You can get a Seagate or an iOmega, you know, 20 terabyte, I'm exaggerating, but something really big and, um, and drag your files onto there and put it in a fireproof box, you know, do that even, you know, once a month would probably be enough. You might lose a month, but you won't lose your whole life. Right. Charlie, one of Greg's children, his son, um, lost his cell phone and it wasn't backed up. And that was a whole thing um, last week and it's been resolved and we figured it out. But, um, you know, you, you don't want to be caught in that situation. And it's usually personal stuff like, oh, wow, all the pictures for Emily's horseback riding show that I drove to UVA to attend are now gone. You know, so it's really it's really important. Yeah. Rose says, why not use the cloud? You can use the cloud. You just want to make sure that they that they're backed up because um, and that's what I do now. I do use the cloud. Um, but for things, I think like personal pictures of the holidays, you really want to try to grab those in a way like my wedding pictures, things like that and put them on a hard drive. Okay. Good, good, good. All right. So these are great comments. So you want to make sure that these things are backed up and really, again, including your website and don't, this is obvious, but I'm going to say it because <laughs> who knows, right? It was, it's only obvious now because I had to think about it. Don't back it up to the server where it is, back it up to Dropbox or OneDrive or, you know, somewhere else. Um, and there's two components to a WordPress website. There's the, um, the contents, like the blog posts and the words, and then the structure. So it's the PHP. And then I don't know what the other one is, but you want to make sure you're backing both of them up. Okay. How do you back up a website? There's software for that and it's free. And let me just think if I can think about what it's called. Um, Updraft Plus. Updraft Plus is what my guy uses. And, um, and, and I have him set it up because I'm not, I don't know enough of how to set it up to make sure that I can restore it. I mean, that was a big thing when I was in corporate was the IT department reported to me and yeah, you can have a backup, but you have to make sure you can restore it. You know, so you, you want to make sure that the data is in good shape and you have everything you need. Yeah, good. Okay, running out of supplies. You know, how many of you are always out of, you know, ink or you can't find a pen or, uh, you know, you need paper. I, I, this is something that can really drive you crazy, right? And yes, we have Amazon these days and you can get anything in two days or the next day, but really, um, but really you want to, um, you know, you, you want to have the supplies that you need near you. I have scissors right here. Now, yes, I don't know, 20 feet away. I'm bad at that. 25 feet. I don't know. In my kitchen, there are scissors and pens and all the things, but I need them right here. So go get yourself to the store, get yourself whatever you need. Scissors, post-its, you know, little, you know, I have like little baskets to hold my little note things. Um, do what you need to do to get yourself organized because you do not want to be working in a you know, situation like this. You know, you definitely don't want to be um, in a situation like this. Yeah. So someone says, how often should I back up my website? So I think the rule of thumb is to back up the structure of it once a month and then um, twice a month back up um, the content. And for me, I was creating new uh, uh, blog posts every other week. So that, that worked for me. Um, and I wasn't making big changes to my website, you know, like adding new pages and stuff. But if you add, if you add new content or you do a big update, click that um, backup button for sure. Yeah. Kakoya says updraft is good. Um, I use code guard through HostGator. Yes. Mar uh, Diana having to buy ink instead of getting a big, big ink tank printer. Yeah. Yeah. And ink is expensive and I'm bad about that. Great. I'm always, you know, like, I have the black, you know, the black. Um, and uh, Greg's like, would you just get the ink? And so I do have a backup of ink for sure. Just don't buy too much from experience. Um, uh, I, you, the printer broke 
decided not to like, you know, you don't get printers really fixed these days. And, um, and so I had extra ink. And so you don't want $140 worth of ink there. You just want maybe that $70, you know, for the next round, and then you can order it as you need it. Yes. Um, Heather says yes to baskets for notes. So many notes. Yes. Yes. Sam's and Costco are great for getting ink. Yes. Remember that. Remember that for sure. So every once in a while, and right now is one of those times, my desk is a little out of control. It's not quite that bad, but it's pretty close. And um, it's important to just take everything off, wipe it down, clean it up, and then look at each thing, um, each thing that you're going to put back on your desk and organize it, right? Good. Yeah, Maria said that she just... Um, yeah, the, that she now has ink she can't use. Greg had that in the basement. And last week um, we were cleaning up, getting ready for Thanksgiving. And he just looked at me like, I can't even believe I did this. But he said, um, I have ink for a printer that doesn't work. And I said, hand it to me. We're taking it to Goodwill. He's been pushing it around, feeling bad about it for I don't know how long. Just give it away. Give it away. It's okay. Good. Good, good, good. All right. So I want to talk about two more, two more things. Um, one is not automating or streamlining. And what I mean by that is here's a really, really simple example. A long time ago, people would ask for my W-9. So that's a way for them to get my uh, EIN or my social security number, right? So what I would do, I, I, I don't know what I was thinking. Each time someone would ask me, I would fill it out and I date it and I would scan it and I would email it to them. And then for some reason, I didn't put the scan in a smart place. So I kept doing it. And I'm like, finally, it takes a couple of cycles for me. It bonks me over the head. And I'm like, what am I doing? Like, what am I doing? So what I do, it, what I did was I took my, um, my W-9. I saved it. Belinda Sandor, um, W-9 2022. I put it in a folder where I know where it is. When someone asks for it, I just bring it over. It's seconds, right? Versus the whole, I got to download. I, 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 I don't know what I was thinking, but there are things like that. I promise you that are just as ridiculous that you're doing too. So start to look about, look at that. Another one was onboarding a new client. Make a list. What are the 10 things you're going to do? Look at the blog at the VA connection. There's a list right there. And if you are in VA school or the VIP club, look in your templates right there. New client onboarding right? There's a checklist. So definitely think about that. And um, not paying attention to mistakes. You really want to pay attention when a mistake happens and not to beat yourself up, but to think, how can I make that better? How can I make it so that, um, so, so that my business improves, my client experience improves? So really look at mistakes and think, okay, all right, so how can I make it so that I don't that doesn't happen again. And sometimes it's like a little fluke. It's like, whoops, that was a mistake. But other times you need to put a system in place to support that, right? So make sure you do that. And now I wanna take a talk about an action plan. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll go through my house when I have time and I'll look at every single room. Like we need to paint the baseboard here. This plug needs to be replaced. It's time for a new whatever, you know, and I'll go through and make this massive list of everything and then I'll organize it and prioritize it and then just, you know, tick things off one at a time, right? That's what the key. You fix tolerations one at a time. And don't wait until you have the perfect plan. You know, definitely don't wait until you make a perfect plan. And the way that you do this is you pay attention to what you're stumbling over, you know? And if you're like me, you might have to stumble a couple of times like, oh, I've just tried to print again. It's still not fixed. I wonder why. Well, because I haven't fixed it, you know? So what has to happen is for me, I need to write it down on a post-it, put it in the post-it farm and, you know, and then eventually I'll, I'll, I'll get to it when the time is right. So put an annual audit on your calendar. Look for tolerations, you know? And one of the things that I just did and I'm still working on is in August, I started going through every single thing in my house. I touched I haven't, I'm not done yet, but I've touched probably 75% of everything in my house. I wiped it down. I evaluated it. I decided if I was going to keep it. I'm talking my underwear drawer, my shoes, my clothes, you know, wrapping paper, all the things, all the things. And I just went through all of it and made some choices about whether or not I wanted to take care of it anymore. And then a lot of things went to Goodwill. Some things went up in the attic, clearly labeled so I can find them when we have that farmhouse, right? So it's really important. So Cindy says, you're speaking my language. I love a good action list. Yes. And Diana says, I love 
having favorite folders, one click to get to the folder and not clicking through all the folders to get it. Yes, 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 yes. That's good. So make an action plan. And when you see the toleration, you know, don't wait until your whole life is blowing up. Um, you know, like, okay, the printer's not working. Handle that. Handle that. Okay, you guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. It's the top of the hour and time to wrap up. I just want to make sure that all of you know about my free online classroom, the virtual assistant connect, the VA connection. So if you're not a member, if you're catching us on YouTube or LinkedIn or Twitter, um, or somewhere else on on Facebook, go on over, put the VA connection in the search bar at the top and click the join button. And I would love to welcome you in. Lots of benefits, lots of training. I'm just about to add something new. Um, it's a guide to getting great clients. I was just working with Mark Tatro, my guy, my graphics guy on it. We're wrapping it up this morning. And so you're going to see a post about that um, in the early afternoon about that guide to getting great clients. So check. So where the guides are is you go to the VA connection, doc, uh, the VA connection um, on Facebook. And then up at the top, there's guides. And there's already three freebies there that are very valuable. We're going to add this one later today. I've got it on a post-it. So it's going to happen. Okay, guys. Good. Join me over there. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for coming to this episode of Lessons from the Cockpit. I hope it was useful. I hope you got a lot out of it. And I hope you'll join me again. Bye for now.